What's up, fellas? So, had a loyal patron supporter that in the comments that said, um, he actually, this, I shouldn't say this was a loyal patron supporter. This was a guy in my community tabs. And I've seen this a couple of times throughout the years I've been on YouTube too. Um, that said, uh, he followed something I said and he lost his girl. And so, uh, while 95% of the feedback I get uh, come from guys saying, hey man, this, listen to this guy, fellas. He got my wife purring like a kitten, you know. You every now and then, I say maybe three or four times a year, I'll see a comment where a guy say, man, I did what this guy said and he screwed up my relationship. So I just wanted to clear some things up and do some talking points on the things that I say that will cost you women, guys. Because y'all guys got to understand that um, my philosophy is not centered around to get you the most women. I want y'all guys to understand that. Being with a woman will not make you happy. Being with a woman that respects you and submits to you will make you happy. You do not want to be with a woman if she doesn't respect you or look up to you as the king. I'm just going to let you know that now. So if your goal is just to have a woman, if you just want to have a woman and don't want to have a backbone and want to put her on a pedestal and you just want to keep your girl, then don't listen to nothing I say because I'm going to cost you relationships. Because that's not what my advice is centered around, keeping your woman. Okay, guys? So let me get into my talking points. Uh, some of the stuff y'all done heard me say, and I'll rehash it because I want to put all this stuff into one video, okay? The things that um, will cost you women. Uh, number one, guys, the number one thing that's going to cost you women is being on your purpose. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, AMS. Oh, whole time out. I'm out. How the hell is being on my purpose going to cost me women? Now, you've been saying all this time, being on my purpose is going to get me women. So <clears throat> this is probably going to be a long ass talking point. But let me explain something to you guys. Being on your purpose is not going to get you women. If you're a guy with low self-esteem, then yes, because you're trying to build yourself up. But if you're a guy that doesn't have those issues, like a motherfucker who wear two earrings I was telling y'all about, the motherfucker who think he fine, you know, mother, you said, like I told you guys, motherfucker wear two earrings, he don't think he handsome. That motherfucker think he pretty. That motherfucker don't think he good looking. That motherfucker think he fine. If you one of those motherfuckers, purpose will cost you women. Because guys, I'm going to tell you right now, the best way to get women is to revolve your life around that. It's just like anything in life. You get what you put in. So if you're a guy and... I would say the one thing that you can't get around is being in decent shape, right? That's the one thing. But if you're a guy and you're in fairly decent shape and you dress fairly decent, I ain't saying you got to be out here in a tailored or money suit or no shit like that with some uh, snake skin or alligator uh, loafers on, but just decent, you know, a nice fitted polo, nice fitted jeans, not skinny, slim fit jeans and some decent loafers and you went to the mall every day and approached 30 women and then went to the club every night, I guarantee you, you're going to sleep with way more women than a guy on this purpose. But that guy is going to have a better life than you as far as financial and happiness and fulfillment. But we just talking about banging the most women and we going to just do it head to head. A man who's working 80 hours a week, hell, even 60 hours a week, 
can't ain't gonna be able to touch a dude who's at the mall every fucking day talking to women every day as far as sleeping with women. I'm just telling you, he's just gonna have more time to do it. I'm talking about for guys who got the self-esteem. Now, if you're a guy who obviously uh, deal with self-esteem issues, then you're going to need purpose because you need to build your self-esteem and confidence. But I'm just talking about on a level playing field. Take me, for instance, who got great self-esteem. Being on my purpose actually cost me women. I, could, I have not, I tell y'all guys this, <laughs> when I was in the basement, I slept with the most women. But just understand that my life revolved around that. But which one you think I'm happier with? <laughs> Banging 50, 60 women a year, living in a fucking basement with three grand in the bank? Or where I'm at now, living a much better lifestyle, banging eight women a year. Which, which one you think is better? So that's the whole point about purpose. Another thing with purpose too is, we're just gonna be honest, self-esteem or not, there's only a certain level of quality of women you can get when you're not on your purpose. That go for motherfuckers with two earrings, three earrings, five earrings. I don't give a goddamn you got an earring in your goddamn dick. It's a, you, you have a ceiling of the quality of women you can get when you're not on your purpose. I'm just, we're just gonna call it a spade. We're just gonna call it a spade a spade. I don't care what you look like. I don't care if you got an earring in your nose. I don't care if you got an earring in your tongue. I don't give a damn if you got an earring in your ass. It won't matter. You gonna have a ceiling if you are not, don't have your shit all the way together. So what can happen is a woman can go find you very hot. Say, say you are very uh, attractive to a woman and you take talking to a guy from experience. I can sleep with these women but I couldn't maintain them because at some point hypergamy going to kick in. So that lust factor would only go so far. So maybe I could bang them once. Maybe I could bang them twice, but at some point they going to get ghosts. Now I can't beat these motherfuckers with a goddamn get your ass around me. They ain't beat these motherfuckers away. I can go out and meet a dime. Now you ain't going nowhere. Be at the door waiting. I'm like, goddamn, what took you so long? Yeah, we don't have them problems no more. Yeah. Now that's what purpose do. Yeah, you don't get that. Yeah, you, you, you don't get that from no book. Yeah, that's what purpose do. You can't beat these motherfuckers away. Shit. Y'all heard that tape? That girl called Chris Brown, the one that accused him of uh, grape, and uh, he, she filed a lawsuit and had to drop it because he had the receipts. She told myself, I ain't never, I ain't never had no BBC like that, da, 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 da. Y'all think she would have been doing all that but Chris Brown was a construction worker? Now, you know that Chris Brown fucking with her. You know she bad. And I ain't seen no videos of the girl. I ain't seen no pics of the girl. I just know if she fucking around with Chris Brown, she got to be at least a nine. At least a nine. But yet she on that what purpose do. Yeah, she on that begging and crying. Hey, I can't believe you don't call me back. That what purpose do. So, purpose will get you a better quality of women as far as retention. You can bang a woman just if she finds you attractive, right? You can go bang your 9 or a 10 if she just finds you, like, a, a, a gorgeous or whatever. But what I'm telling you is you're not going to be able to maintain it. Here's the issue. Say, well, I don't care. I fucked her up. I'm going to tell you right now. When you get hot chicks and you like hot chicks and you bang out, you want to keep her around. That's just the way it is. We ain't in the habit of just getting bad chicks and losing them next week. You want to keep fucking the motherfucker. How many of you guys the met a girl you like, had sex with her, and then she started pulling back? Next thing you gone, she gone, and you like, God damn, what happened? That's what happens. Now, if you would have had that Ferrari in that penthouse, you wouldn't have had to ask what happened. No, you wouldn't have had to ask what happened. See, that's what purpose do. Okay, guys? So the whole thing about purpose, guys, is it actually costs you women. I'm just going to put that out there right now. Being on your purpose actually costs you women. You better off. 
you're better off if you have the confidence to do so. Just hit the mall every day and be a big ass, broke ass loser. Long as you're in fairly decent shape. I ain't saying you gotta be on a Schwarzenegger in the seventies. Just be sub 15%, 15 or below body fat percent. You ain't gotta have abs, none of that bullshit. And dress halfway decent. You don't even gotta wear designer, none of that bullshit. Just wear a polo shirt, uh, a polo, a fitted polo shirt, jeans, and some loafers. That's it. You bang way more chicks because you're gonna encounter more women. So I just want to put that out there. Okay, guys. Next, I don't talk about this, but I gotta put it in this video. Uh, because I, if, if I'm gonna do the video, even if it's talking points I don't already talk about, I gotta put in the, the, the whole video to it's you know, everything gotta go in the video. But waiting for choosing signals. I am telling you right now, that is the absolute worst way. Worst way to, to sleep with women. I'm just gonna tell you right now, it is. I've said this, I've explained this over and over and over and over and over again. Some of you guys still don't grasp this. Waiting for choosing signal is about enjoying yourself and not revolving it around female validation, whatever activity you're doing around female uh, validation. That's what the waiting for choosing signals is to put you in the mindset of to go out and enjoy yourself and not need female validation. That's the whole thing with being on your purpose also is that when you on your purpose guys, right off the bat, Monday through Friday is off limits. <clears throat> I'm, if, if Monday through Friday is about purpose, uh, work or school, purpose in the gym and meal prep, then that means that I only have two days to fill, right? Right off the bat, I'm, I'm a lot less lonely right off the bat. Right off the bat, I'm a high value man. I, I, my time is very limited, right off the bat. Let's hypothetically say Saturday is um, your date night and Sunday could either be another date or a homeboy day, especially during football season, or recovery day. Well, I mean recovery day is uh, you went out Saturday, had a, a, a few drinks, and you need to hydrate up for work and school or whatever during the week on Sunday, clean, deep clean the house and stuff like that on Sunday and meal prep for Monday on Sunday where it's kind of a chill day. So off the bat, guys, you only got Saturday right off the bat. You see how your life automatically is less stressful now? So, and I'm going back to purpose because I want to explain this to y'all some more. I forgot to bring this up. The one reason why I started back, I'm working on another book now. I'll be out soon. Don't ask me in the comments when the book coming out. I swear for God, I'm going to tell you, kiss my ass. If I see one more when the book come out in the comments, this video, the video after that, or the video after that, I am simply going to say, kiss my ass. I'm not even going to say soon or next month, next week. I'm just going to say, kiss my ass. Okay. You know what? I might abbreviate it so I don't offend nobody or just put KMA. And y'all know what it means. It means kiss my ass. I'm specifically telling you motherfuckers, don't ask. It's out when it's out. Okay? But part of the reason I started writing the other book, the new book, and part of the reason, um, and I don't know when I'm going to upload this. The book might be three months old by the time I release this. Motherfuckers still ain't learned that I... The, the videos, I make the videos and I have a catalog of videos. Goddamn, I might have been wrote five more books by the time this video come out. I don't fucking know. I might have gray hair out my ass by the time I release this video. I'm tired of you motherfuckers not understanding that the videos, sometimes uh, I store the videos. I might have 20 videos stored and motherfuckers still running around. Ooh, he been 43 for five years. I hate you motherfuckers. But anyway, getting back to what I was saying, per, I, I saw myself falling back in the trap of being into validation, female validation, where my nights were revolving around female companionship. And so that's why I got back on my purpose because I didn't like my evenings being dictated by whether I had another date or another rotation girl or whatever the fuck you want to call it 
uh, hanging out or coming over or whatever, right? I didn't like that. I said, man, this starting to feel just like it was when I was but uh, pre-getting on my purpose. Well, my life is starting to revolve around bitches, and I ain't like it. So I started to get back on my grind because I seen that I had too much. See, the thing is, when y'all guys get to a point where I'm at and, and you kind of set, like I typically, if I was to stop making videos right now and did nothing else right now, just off my book sales and my interest of the money I got in my brokerage account, I could live off a, a nice six figure lifestyle, comfortable lifestyle, just off that. If I did nothing else, so y'all guys can understand how the complacency can set in to where anybody can set in complacency and be like, well, you know, but the problem was that was not an issue with that. The issue was I didn't like that. My life was starting to revolve around females again. And that's why I got back on my purpose because I, I, I when your life revolves around females, it's going to be stressful or more stress because how should I say this without offending anybody? Women are trash. Yeah, I, I hope I ain't offend nobody. I, I hope no women, you know, no animals were harmed doing me saying that and nothing like that. But when your life revolves around women, it's going to always be more stress because women are trash. I, 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 uh, let me, let's, let's call it what it is. If women, <laughs> if women won difficult to deal with, I honestly believe no man would ever get married. I honestly believe that. I honestly believe men get married, the, the men that do get married, they just get tired of dating game. They be like, man, these bitches are shit. I honestly believe that. I honestly believe that. I believe no man would ever, I don't believe no man would ever get in a relationship I don't believe no man would ever get married if women were not stressful, not difficult to deal with. Well, as women say, a lot to handle, as they like to say, right? So when you get into that, when your life starts to reverberate around sleeping with women, it's going to become toxic. You're only going to get peace from your purpose. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care if you the top celebrity in the world. If you're dealing with females, a bunch of females, you are bringing more toxicity into your life. I don't care who you are, how rich you are, how much status you have. The more women you deal with, the more toxic energy you're going to bring in your life. Are there some non-toxic women out there? Yes. Are there some less stressful women out there? Yes. But they are neither in the haystack. And the average woman you deal with is as from time to time it's gonna run your damn blood pressure one way whether it's checking her or passing a shit test or all type of little bullshit that they do i decided that i didn't want to revolve my life around female validation no more that's the same reason why i tell y'all guys to wait on choosing signals you're never going to be happy when you your life revolves around female validation but hey what do i know you got two strands of hair around your balls. You know every fucking thing. What I know. What I know. You do what you want to do. Go out there and holler all night off all I care. But if we're talking about which is the best way to get women, waiting for choosing signals is the worst way to get women. And we're going to take it on now. If we're talking about having fun and living a better stress-free life, wait for choosing signals. Next, guys. Waiting a week to call women. So I told guys that and a lot of guys, some guys say it works good. Some other guys say it don't. That will cost you some women because some women will take that as, oh, well, he ain't really that into me. He ain't pursuing me like that. But y'all guys got to understand that when I told y'all about waiting to call the women, that is predicated on you being on your purpose. See, if you're on your purpose and you're on your grind, Monday and Monday through Friday is off limits. Right off the bat. No bitches. Monday through Friday. No bitches. You grinding. No bitches. Right? Your only date night 
is Saturday, right? Because you got to, if, if some of you guys got uh, homeboys or something, you really need to try to keep a day in there, like to, to keep the friendship so y'all don't grow apart if you have that. If not, then maybe you could do a, a second day or something like that. But typically, um, if you're a guy that's on your purpose and grind and you're working 60 hours a week plus, typically, man, you, you probably going to need that Sunday to recover and rest for the work week, right? But you could do two. If you got the energy to do it, then do it. The point, my point of saying was you still want to have multiple options. And so if Monday through Friday is off limits, and you only got Saturday and Sunday to date women, then you only have two options. Now that works well when the women are in your rotation and, and they've made it to that point. But at the beginning stages of dating, if you're on your purpose and you're gonna try to put all your eggs into one or two women, guys, I don't know about y'all guys, but y'all guys should know with women you need a whole bunch of eggs because women have a whole bunch of eggs. Women have a whole goddamn forest of eggs. And so there's a very good chance that your egg don't crack. So if you're a guy that's on your purpose Monday through Friday and you're going to try to put all your hopes on a girl that you just met, I guarantee you, you is going to be scratched out a long time. You have to have a whole lot of plates spinning dealing with women you just do because they too fickle they have too many options it's just a whole bunch of shit going on with women so if you're gonna listen to me what i'm gonna tell you is if you went out with a girl on this saturday and monday through friday is off limits then next saturday you need to go out with another chick and then go out with this chick the following week or whenever the hell you go out with her but to put all your eggs in, man you'll go out with this woman two, this woman two or three times just to have her my magically lose interest. Ah, uh, she just, she just doesn't feel the spark. So you invested a month of your time hoping you can hash this egg and now the egg is sour. The egg is rotten. Now, if you got seven days a week open, then there's no need to do that. But this is predicated off of Monday through Friday being off limits. So you wait a week when you first start if, you have, if you're on your purpose and your grind because you don't want to put all your eggs into one basket because women are just too fickle to do that. All right, guys. Now, that was something that I used to do right and the reason why some of you guys should still do that and not this one because this is more of an ego thing right here what i'm finna say now but now i initiate the next day but i don't take i don't set a date i now will wait for her to initiate contact with me now i'm gonna sit here and i'm gonna tell you right now that is not a strategy you should use unless you have some reliable ass because I'm well aware that a lot of women are just not going to initiate contact with you off of one day even if you initiated contact with them first most women are just hardwired trained that the man do all the pursuing for the first month I'm very well aware of that and what I'm sitting here telling you is I don't give a damn I refuse, I refuse on ego alone, on ego alone for a bitch that's a fucking secretary making $13 an hour to demand that me, AMS, do all the pursuing of her like she got them God Almighty. I refuse. You hear me, right? I refuse with a capital R. And it's pure ego and got nothing to do with no goddamn strategy or does she gonna think I'm high back? None of that bullshit. I refuse to sit up here and initiate contact with a bitch, sit back like she King Tut 
Wait no media knit do all the initiating for the first month or two while she sit back and and wait on me to set a date. Fuck that bullshit. So most of you should stick with the waiting a week to call. That one I said is pure ego. I refuse for a bitch to think I should do all the goddamn pursuing. No, a girl should not hit me up and ask me am I free Friday or Saturday night. That is ludicrous and I'll never, if I was to tell my sister, I would tell her. But these bitches don't even know the difference between showing interest and pursuing. There ain't nothing wrong with a fucking good morning, how's your day going text without me initiating it. There ain't nothing wrong with say, hey, how's your day going? So I refuse to do it anymore. You do what the hell you want to do, but I'm going to tell you right now, if you do that, you will lose women. And what I'm telling you about me is I don't give a damn. Eyes are going to be respected. You're damn right. So for all you guys that's on your purpose and busting your ass and getting on your grind, what the fuck you look like starting a business, building a seven-figure business, and then go out here and do all the pursuing of a goddamn secretary or a goddamn paralegal? You don't bump your motherfucking head. Like, hey, listen, listen, if I was, if I was pursuing, a, 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 and I know she married now, Rihanna, or Beyonce, or um, who else is an A-list a, a top? Um, I can't think of nobody, but y'all know the fuck I'm talking about. An uh, A-list celebrity, female celebrity. And you, I can kind of say, I say oh, you know what, man, okay, all right. It's fucking, you know, some, some not late in it. You know, I, you know okay, they are, you know, they are swallowing my pride a little bit. Bitch, you goddamn a secretary. A temp at that. You don't even got benefits. You ain't finished your probationary period. They don't even give you 401k yet. And I'm supposed to do all the pursuing? All the initiating? Get the fuck out of here. You don't even got a parking spot. They don't even got you a permanent time card. They got you the little cardboard thing for temps. What the fuck you, man, you don't bump your motherfucking head. So like I told you guys, that is going to cost you women if you do that. I'm beyond that. I got reliable ass on top of reliable ass on top of reliable ass. I really don't give a fuck. You know, it's kind of like y'all see how the billionaires go to casinos and they bet a hundred grand a hand. That's because they got billions. That's what they can do that. So when y'all hear me say that is, I got reliable ass on deck that I'm just like, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. That's how my mindset is. I don't give a fuck. All right. Next, guys. Setting boundaries. Most women would not like you setting boundaries. Most women don't mind you where they, they want a man that checks them when they get out of line. But most women don't like setting boundaries. And when I say boundaries, male friends um, um, are not answering her phone around you. Whatever your boundaries is, whatever you feel like it's a boundary for you. Most women don't like that. Most women is going to classify that as insecure and mainly because they want to do all they fuckery and shit like that. And they want to keep all their orbiters and all this other shit so they can feel validated and feel cute. You know, all the other bullshit. So they don't want you setting boundaries. They don't mind you when they do something out of pocket and you, and you check them. But they don't, like, they, don't want, they don't like you setting boundaries. No, they don't like that. No, they kind of like you giving them rules. Yeah, they, they don't want you telling them that they can't wear a, a, a two-piece thong bikini on, on Instagram. No. No. Most women want you to be able to be securing your manhood. And I go, I sleep with you every night. And you should know that. You should know. You should trust me. I do trust you. But like what I told you guys. This ain't about insecurity. This ain't about trust. This is about respect. So 
women want to be able to get on it. And I'm talking about your girlfriends now, a girl that you heavily been dating consistently or wise or whatever. Women want to be able to get their ass on Instagram with the butt cheeks all out. And you supposed to be cool with that because you're secure in your manhood. Fuck that bullshit. She want to be able to go out with her male co-workers and you are cool with that because you're secure in your manhood. And you know she come home and she sleeps with you every night. Yeah, they don't want you to, to have things that's just respectable in a relationship. So I'm going to tell you right now, some of the stuff I told y'all guys as far as setting boundaries, stuff, it's going to cost you women. It's going to cost you women. You think you're going to get and tell every woman she can't do this on, on social media, she can't wear that on social media, she can't have this type of friend, that type of friend, uh, she can't. Uh, go on a girl's trip for goddamn 10 days, and you, you think some women are gonna be like, okay, dear. I'm telling you right now, when you set those boundaries with some women, some will say, yeah, right then, and then they're gonna renege on you. They are like, yeah, oh, okay, dad, I understand. And then watch three months later. I, but I just don't see, you, 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 you ought to trust me. Ain't about trust, bitch. It's about respect. And make sure she know that. Make sure she don't flip it. If you wait, if you don't set those boundaries and you try to do it later, she's going to say you insecure. You can't play the respect card. But it's about respect. I ain't even worried about a bitch. Y'all guys really think I'm concerned with some dude who in her DMs on Instagram? She can consider him a fan. It's about respect for me. Next, guys, holding frame. I'm going to tell you right now, guys, holding frame, some women are going to think you're boring. But what I'm going to tell you right now is holding frame is not about getting the most chicks. Holding frame is to keep a bitch from toying with you. Holding frame is about to keep a bitch from testing you all night. Who y'all guys play with? Do you play with somebody who holds frame, hold a solid masculine frame? Who, who, who do you test? Some, some, most of us have not got a wolf mentality where we walk around bullying people, but we t do tend time to time to might say, say a little sarcastic joke from time to time to somebody. You don't do that with the, the, the masculine frame, motherfucker. He don't even play like that. You probably do, you'll do that more with somebody who got more like a, a feminine frame, a more playful frame. You ain't going to do that little sarcastic underhanded jab with somebody who hold masculine frame. You don't want to get your ass whooped. And see, that's what, that's how women are. They don't want, you don't want to test nobody who's sitting up here all stoic and shit. You want to play and do all that, ask all those dumb ass questions to somebody you can kind of goddamn toy with and ask stupid questions and all this other type of shit. So yes, I'm going to tell you right now, if you hold now, let's be fair. Some of you motherfuckers are overdoing it. Yeah, it's called, it's called spade a spade. Some of you motherfuckers are going on these goddamn dates. Like goddamn Clint Eastwood in the good, the bag and the ugly. When you, when they did the showdown at the end where the camera was zooming around, and showing all of them eyes, some of you motherfuckers overdoing this goddamn shit, and I knew it. I wish it was some type of way that I could just pop up in the middle of one of these dates when one of you motherfuckers was holding the masculine frame too goddamn hard, and I just kick you dead off in your ass and say, loosen your ass up. Just kick you, get that damn look off your face. Just kick you dead in your ass. Get that damn stupid ass look off your face. See what looking like a goddamn crazy man. I wish it was some type of way that I could just do that. Just pop out of the, out of the damn soda, just like, just like a genie in a bottle, and kick you dead off in your ass for sitting up there on a date looking like this hill. Tell me how you hold a masculine frame. Beat your ass. Masculine frame is about being the seductive, cool, you're talking. It's not about sitting there looking like a fucking psychopath. 
So if you're doing that, then I can understand. But some women don't even want you stoic. They want you, God, you're so, <laughs> like they out with their girlfriend. If, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. If you're ever out on a date with a girl and she try to give you the fist bump, you friend zone. You friend zone. Just get up right then and walk away from the table. Don't even say nothing else to her. If she try to give you a fist bump, like y'all just sitting there having a good time and you say something funny and she try to give you a fist bump, just say, just get up. Don't pay the bill in there. Just walk out. Just save face and walk out. Because you are already in the friend zone. Next, guys. Walking away from disrespectful women. I'm telling you right now, it's going to cost you women. But it's going to give you some relief. You're breaking up with your girl. Listen to AMS. I'm going to tell you right now. Some of y'all motherfuckers, I'm going to show I got a script. And she's going to call me back. And she got to suck a whole lot of dick. You sitting there on the bed, dreaming of all the positions you're going to make her suck your dick. Been one week. Two weeks. Uh-oh. Three weeks. Send me an email. AMS. Uh, it's been three weeks. My girl ain't calling me. What should I do? You got to stay, stay going, no contact. Move on with your life. Act like she ain't coming back. Four weeks. Oh, now you want a consultation. Talking about you want to know what you did wrong. Uh-oh. I'm telling you right now. You, you sitting there walking your ass away, thinking that like every girl going to come back and suck a whole lot of dick. You're going to be sucking your own dick. And what I'm telling you, is you're better off sucking your own dick than being with a disrespectful woman. Because being with a disrespectful woman, it emasculates you every day of the week. You won't even have a dick. You're going to have a fucking vagina. So you better off sucking your own dick. You're better off being single in a fucking cave with a bear and a whale and a tiger than to be with a woman who don't respect you. And they got some saying... About that in the Bible, something about it's better to be alone than be with a, uh, something, uh, uh, something, something. I know one of you nerd Bible motherfuckers put in the comments. Put in the comments. I got them. I'll pin it. Shit. Oh, hey, oh, hey, man. It goes like this, brother. Shut the fuck up. I was just get on my damn nerves. But it's something about that in the Bible that says that. And I'm sitting here to tell you that to be true. I am sitting here to tell you that to be true. Okay, guys? So, if you walk away from a woman, just understand, it's 50-50, she come back and suck a whole lot of dick, or it's 50-50, you might not never hear from that motherfucker again. It just really depends on her attraction level when you left, and um, <clears throat> her attraction level, her options, um, and how good, how, how good the lifestyle was that you provided. It's really going to be dictated off of that, guys. All right? Last, guys, never apologize. I am sitting here telling you now to never apologize to a woman because you give them the power and the relationship flips. The only way, the only time it's good to apologize, because I, I change, I, y'all, this is like an amendment, right? It's kind of like an amendment. You know how the, the, they went through, they made the Constitution, then they had to go in and they had to make some amendments, right? They're like, okay, all right, we can do that, but we got to do an amendment right here. So never apologize, and the amendment would be unless you know you did something terribly wrong, right? So like I told y'all guys about a year ago, uh, the, chick, the main chick I'm dating now, I had too much to drink, was at the club, and I'm just carrying on, acting like an ass and stuff like that. And I apologize because it was uncalled for, but I had a little too much to drink, but that don't excuse it. And so I had to apologize because it wasn't her being disrespectful or that. It was just me having too much to drink and being a goddamn jackass. If that's the situation, then yes, apologize. If it's the situation, like I had a guy who sent me an email not too long ago and he was saying the girl told, asked him to hold the purse and he was like, I don't feel comfortable holding your purse. And then she had a, she felt a certain type of way the rest of the night. And so then he says, 
he apologized because he said that it rubbed her the wrong way. See that? Not, see that's a problem, because you're not wrong telling her you you don't feel comfortable holding her purse. So in that situation, you should not apologize. Should you only should apologize if you know you was an asshole? You know, like the girl did nothing, and and you like the girl did nothing, and you was just. Maybe you had too much to drink. Maybe you was mad at your boss. Maybe you had a goddamn uh, 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 tennis ball stuck up your ass. I don't fucking know. But for whatever uh, reason, you was just in a bad mood that day. And you just took it out on your girl or whatever. And you was just a dickhead for no reason. Yes, you should apologize. But when you're calm, cool, and you're conveying your boundaries and telling the woman you don't hold her purse is telling her a boundary and she don't respect that boundary, and then you then go and, so if you tell your girl, hey, you know that picture you took on Instagram where you got your ass all back to the camera and stuff like that with them little tights on and stuff with your ass? Yeah, I ain't, I ain't like that. And then she gets mad, and, and instead of her respecting your boundary, you come back, and the next day since you see she upset about it and apologize, fuck that. Only apologize when you know you've been an asshole. A good rule of thumb is if you have to ask, then you probably want an asshole. Because you'll know when you're an asshole. You, you know when you're an asshole. I apologize to anybody. When I know I've been an asshole, I apologize quick. You know when you did, you, you know, we all got our moves. You know, sometimes alcohol brings it out, makes us more uh, uh, say stupid stuff or whatever, but... Y'all got, you'll know when you've been an asshole. But other than that, never apologize. Now, never apologizing. He still has his girl, right? He still has her. Here's the problem. He, he sent me an email because he wanted to know if he did the right thing. Not because he lost his girl, but because, see, when you do stuff like that, he can feel it. He can feel the submission in his gut, and that's why you can't do it. That's why he sent me the email. He, the email wanted to get his girl back. He had his girl because he apologized. But he could just feel the dynamic in the relationship, feel like she has the power now. And that's exactly the problem. So in, here's what happens. Now you can't, you're powerless to set boundaries with your girl because now she knows all she has to do is act upset or give you a cold shoulder to have her way. And that's why you never apologize when you're setting boundaries. When you're an asshole, yes. When, you, when you're setting boundaries. And that's when most men apologize. Most men don't apologize uh, for an asshole moment, right? That's typically not the issue. Typically men apologize when they set a boundary with a woman and she feels a way about it and she gives us not the complete silent treatment, but it's like a little frosty in this motherfucker, right? It ain't a blizzard, but it's drizzling a little snow. It's like a little snowy mist in this motherfucker. And a man will go apologize because he want the sun to come back out. He want this motherfucker to get back to room temperature because he can feel the fridge. It ain't a blizzard. It ain't below zero. Well, it's like 32 degrees in here. It was 75 bright sunny skies. And so that's why you never apologize. Now explain this to me, guys. How is he to set a boundary again? He got his girl. Congratulations. Yay! He got his girl. Hooray! Ain't that great? He has his girl, but she has the power. Oh... Now he can't set boundaries. Oh. Now when she does something that he feels that is disrespectful or slight disrespectful to him, he has to just eat it. Oh. You don't want to be with a... You, you better off losing her. So me telling you not to apologize actually will cost you women. But I'm, what I'm telling you is you don't want to be with this type of woman now the way you're afraid. You know what she's going to do now? She's really going to test all the boundaries. 
and you're powerless to say that thing. And so what happened is, it'll just build up in you and build up in you and build up in you because now she knows how to get past your boundaries because you can't take it being a little chill in this motherfucker. So do what you want to do, guys. All right, guys. I hope you guys learned a lot from this. I'll get back with you guys next time.